Hi, Tampa Native Show fans. Back with you in an all-new season. Stevie, our 16th season. Is it hard to believe? I mean, it's um, in our fifth year already, and now we're in, into 2015. It's so good to be back, by the way. We've been gone for three weeks. Aren't you glad we're back now? I'm excited to be back, and we've got Brian K. Deary in studio tonight, so you need to be with us. Mm -hmm. Pay special attention to the opening. It's a brand new opening for a brand new season That's and right. a brand new time. Call your neighbors, wake your friends. Stevie, because the Tampa Native Show starts right, right now. now. I remember Tampa The way she used to be The places we would run to The faces we would see Yes, I remember Tampa With precious memories A city rising on the move A simple yet progressive groove Yes, I remember Tampa she remembers me. Welcome to the Tampa Native Show. Stay tuned now for the fastest 60 minutes in cable broadcast history. Live from the studios at TBCN, the home of the Tampa Native Show. Join your hosts, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella as they celebrate growing up in Tampa. From Shock Armstrong to Shakey's Pizza, from Braddock Street to Buffalo Avenue, Get ready to call in and tell us your stories, because sharing your memories has never been this much fun. And now, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella. Hi, Tampa Native Show fans. Welcome back to this, our 16th season of the Tampa Native Show. Man, is it good to be back in Can't front of the camera. It. Here I, I am seated alongside my broadcast partner, Steve Canella. The 15-minute girl is just off camera. We're going to go to her in just a second to show you that she actually is here. And my name is Mario Nunez. Welcome back, everybody, and Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. We hope that you had a festive and, 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 and full holiday season. It comes and goes so quickly, Stevie. Sometimes I'm wondering, why do we even take the time to take the lights down, man? Just leave them up. Well, Just leave them up there. And time is going faster and faster anyway. In about another six weeks, you'll need to string them back up again anyway. Right. So thank you all for tuning in on us tonight. Listen, we've got Brian K. Derry here. Just like you saw in the opening, he's going to be sharing his story with us in just a few minutes. He's got a lot to tell us been working on a project, mm -hmm. he's got some ambitious plans, and he's going to solicit for your help because we're going to need to, to draw on mm -hmm. all of our resources to help Brian get this wonderful documentary that he's got planned and, it sounds and running. Awesome. Listen, um, I, I, I told Stevie, mm -hmm. I said, Stevie, why don't we wear sweaters tonight, man? It's totally appropriate outside. It's cold, and here we are looking like Perry Como and Andy Williams. I don't know which one is which. You make the call on that. <laughs> I'm Andy Williams. But, Steve, you look, all right, I guess that makes me Perry okay. Como. Although, you know, you're the Italian. Perry <laughs> Como was the Italian well, there. Right. Uh, let me just also say thank you to our, our cast, our crew. Becky Yata, who's our technical director. She's hard by the TriCaster currently. There's Nick Nunez, our floor director. Uh, Damian Garcia is working our sound bus tonight. And just to be sure that you guys mm -hmm. know we're not pulling your leg, the 15-minute girl is here. Go ahead and take that shot of the 15-minute girl. And she's going to encourage you to call in. There she is. She's taking our phone calls, everybody. So when we ask for your phone calls, be sure to give her a call. When you call in, you want to make sure you give her your, your email address, which mm -hmm. is important so we can include you in our emails. Your phone number, of course, in case we lose you, we can call you back and, uh, and give us your name with the proper spelling. Spell it out for the 15-minute girl. That way she can go ahead and give it to Becky and we can put it on the screen there in front of you. Stevie, I know we did so much between now and the, between then and now, I should say. Uh, Christmas, would, your favorite Christmas gift this year? Well, my favorite Christmas gift, you Go know, I, I have to say, is this sweater. Nice. I love it. Yeah, and you busted it out for the first show of the season. That's why I'm wearing it now. Very it's, it's good. It's wonderful. But I had a great time, too. We were... Where'd you um, go? We went to uh, St. Augustine. All right. Not on Christmas Day, but a little bit before Christmas. Sure. On the, like about a, five days How'd before. you get up there? Drove. Oh, I thought Gen maybe you would have taken the train. No, 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 that's a good idea. I'll it do that is, next right? Time. The Silver Meteor goes right up there from, yeah. That's right, that's right. Union Station, direct to St. Augustine. Oh, man, it is beautiful. So you were all together with the family? No, I was there. It was Jennifer and I. Oh, well, yeah, that's even so better. I had a nice time How up there. How much? Great. I, yeah, yeah, I, thought, I thought he might have come back with a story to tell, like, you know, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. going to be getting married in June, but that's all right. Listen, that, that will, 
Save that for later. We had a nice time too. We had yeah, a family here. Big boy was down from school in Georgia. What'd you do? So we had the family all together. Okay. And my mom and dad too. Now, did you do anything on Christmas Day? Christmas Day? We didn't do anything on Christmas Day. Well, Christmas Day, no. I think we just stayed close to the okay. house on did Christmas okay. Day. Okay. And then, but, but New Year's Eve, now mm -hmm. New Year's Eve was a special day for what us. Did you do there? Again, the whole family together, we went over to Big Cat Rescue. Oh, I've been there before. Have you? Yeah. You know where Big Cat Rescue is? I know exactly where it is. You could drive right by it. It's on Citrus Park Drive, across, right next to Smoky Bones. Mm -hmm. Between Smoky Bones and that BP gas station right there, whatever that is, Chevron. And if you didn't know it was there, you'd drive right past it. Now, you drive about 300 yards back on a single lane paved entryway and when you get back there you realize there's a whole mm -hmm. park back there it's like a game preserve and there's any number of cats we had a wonderful beautiful denny cats. mitchell denny mitchell was our tour guide mm -hmm. and uh and the nice mm -hmm. people over there new year's eve so you can imagine we had some revelers from uh wisconsin there we had some people from auburn because mm -hmm. the next day of course was the outback bowl nice little crowd wonderful experience look i'll show you what i picked up while i was there i support big cat rescue and you should too. I tell you what, 700 pound tigers, you've never been that close to them before. It's kind of scary. You know, if you own cats at home, you think you know cats? You need to go see these cats. Because you don't know cats until you're that close to a 700 pound cat and he just decides he wants to snarl or growl. Was that cat's name Shere Khan? I tell you what, I don't know I, if it was Shere Khan. I remember that. You remember that? I remember the name, yeah. Well, and those cats there, I'll tell you what, they, they live there for the mm -hmm. rest of their lives. A lot of them, right. they're rescues. Mm -hmm. Basically, a lot of them have been abandoned. Uh, some of them have been abandoned. Some of them have been abused. Uh, they had two cats there in particular that had, they, they, they rescued out of somebody's basement. Until they had gotten there to Big Cat Rescue, they never had their paws hmm. on ground because where they were kept in the basement of a, a, a home up north. Anyway, great story. Mm -hmm. Great work those wonderful people do there. And we're going to try to get a group of Tampa Native show fans we, we've together. We've got to do that. To go there and it's... support that wonderful, wonderful organization. Stevie, what did we do last Saturday? Well, last Saturday we had a great time. We went to the uh, John Germany uh, Library mm -hmm. downtown Tampa. And we went to the Florida Gene Genealogical Society, mm -hmm. and uh, Gail Guayardo was there, and we she she was a recipient of the Hillsborough County Century Families um, Award. Yes, sir. And we qualify too, don't we? I think we do. Yeah. She was the first recipient of this. I think it's going to the be an annual first, award. Annual, exactly. And it's to, it's to celebrate, commemorate those families that have been here in Hillsborough mm -hmm. County for a hundred plus years. Right. And Gail Guayardo's family qualified. What a nice uh, tribute mm -hmm. to her family. Her mom and her dad were there. They were there. Gail was very uh, gracious in mm -hmm. receiving the award. And you know what? I got to tell you because I know we've got some folks out there that are watching that are part of that organization. Susan Jones comes to mind. Who else did we meet there? Well, Steve? we had Mike Jones. Mike Jones, um, her brother. Drew. Drew Smith. And. Um, I think it was Drew Smith and also Scott Pooler. Uh, Scott Pooler. Uh, well, yeah. the you know, nicest yeah. folks, and I, you know, I made it a point to tell Steve and I told the group, we, we didn't really know what to expect going there. We got the opportunity. We got invited to go. It was a free event. So Steve and I had breakfast that morning with Father Tom. We'll talk That's about right. that in a few That's minutes. Right. He's going to be our guest next week. So Steve surprised me. He said, Mario, you know, I think I'm going to go. I said, mm -hmm. let's, I said, Stevie, great. Let's go. Not knowing what to expect, we sat there through the presentation. About 45 minutes, we realized, you know, there are other good people just like the guest you're going to meet tonight, Brian K. Derry, right. who love and respect our hometown and its history so much that they are putting their sweat equity, they're putting mm -hmm. their money where their mouth is, they're raising funds, and they're doing wonderful work to preserve our history. And the Florida Genealogical Society, along with the University of South Florida Library Special Collections, I didn't even know this, but they have archived, they're digitally archived, yes. funeral records from dating back to the 1920s and the 19-teens. A.P. Boza, they mm -hmm. have the funeral books, not the death certificates, that's something different, but the funeral books dating back to the 1930s all the way up to the 1980s. So if your great-grandmother may have passed mm -hmm. away here, you know, you can go to that digital archive, you can see the records there, you can see, and in there is her name, her right. parents' name, and in most cases her grandparents' names. So this is kind of all part of the fabric of and, creating... And a great resource. And recreating that right. story. What a resource. Mm -hmm. So those are the nice people at the Florida Genealogical Society. We got to get through all of this at the top of the show because we got so much to do. All right, real quick, Stevie, we got two new T-shirts to show our fans. Okay, good. All right, have you got yours? I've got mine. I know you. I, do. I wore mine today, actually. I know you do. All right, let me let me let me show this because I'm real, real, real proud of this. All right, <laughs> they came out nice. Just to show you how good these shirts look, we've got an example of how good these shirts look. Becky, if you'll bring up that photograph of that young man wearing that shirt, I'm going to tell you there he is. That's Julian Pichardo. That's Mike Baluja's grandson. And is that just not an amazing... He's giving you to Claude Van Damme there. Look at him with and the production crew on the back. And the hat. 
and the hat as well. The, the hat's a one of a kind, by the way. The production, the production crew shirt, this is what we're using as our fundraising, one of our fundraising vehicles, okay? So what we're asking is if you'd like to make a donation to the Tampa Native Show and help us fund this wonderful experience each and every week, buy one of these shirts. Mm -hmm. How much do these shirts cost, Stevie? How much are they? Oh, they're $50. <laughs> Stevie didn't okay. know. I threw him a curveball right there. He didn't know. They're $50. But what do you get for $50? Stevie, I'm going to ask you. No, I'm not going to ask you because no, you probably don't know that either. What do you get for $50? Idea. Here's what you get. You get this wonderful shirt. We make you an honorary member of the Tampa Native Show production crew. And by that, I mean each and every week at the end of the show, your name will appear on the credits for the entire year. How about that? It gets better, Stevie. I need that. We put you on the VIP list so that whenever we have an event, you get the first opportunity at that invitation. You get first right of refusal to join us before anybody else does. You hear about the events first. Right. What else do they get, Steve? What else? I'll tell them what else they get. <laughs> you get a personal invitation to come in here in studio with us and watch a live taping of the Tampa Nation That's Show. That's cool. All for $50. That's, really cool. That's pretty good, and it goes to a great cause. What's that cause? Help us fund this show, stay on the air. Perhaps buy Stevie a new sweater every once in a keep, while. Keep the history alive. And keep our history alive. So that's our Tampa Native Show production shirt. This one is mm -hmm. $50, but I've got another shirt too. If 50 is a little too hot There's on more. your budget, here's another one. This one is for those people that are just like us Tampa Natives mm -hmm. that walk around all day saying, man, what is this traffic all about? Like tonight. I remember Tampa when there was no traffic. When you can get anywhere in town for 15 minutes and you didn't even need to hit all the traffic lights right. Well, this shirt is going to be available to you for $20. Okay, all the proceeds go to funding the show. Where can they get the show, Steve? Where can they pick up these shirts, Stevie? Well, next, next week? Tuesday. Ah, here we that's go. That's right, at Castillo's Cafe. There you go. We're going to have a little, a little event there, a little dinner. Right. So that would be the perfect opportunity to get your shirt. 7 to 9 o'clock with, with our guest, Brian Carey, who's right. Brian, Brian Derry. K. Derry. I, you know, I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> the K and the D Brian got K. in there. Derry. Brian K. Derry. Brian's going to be there to answer your questions, and, and hopefully you, you have mm -hmm. some information you can impart and share with him about, right. you know, Tampa history mm -hmm. and help him with his production. But we're going to be there. Castillo's, Ca Castillo's Cafe and Catering. Mm -hmm. Where are they located, Stevie? They're located on Armenia, just, just north of the interstate. Just north of the interstate, just north of right. Main Avenue, right, right. right there, Main Street, right there in the heart of West Tampa. Exactly. 7 to 9 o'clock, everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. they got room for about and, 60. And good food, too. So don't be late. Henry and Kiki, uh, Kiki and Raul, they're going to have the kitchen open and ready for us. So everybody... That's coming up next Tuesday, all right? You know, Father Tom, we met, we met last Saturday. Yes, we did. Before we went to the library. Um, and at La Aguila Restaurant. Yes, another. It was packed that morning, <laughs> but we had the best time talking to Father Tom. In fact, Father you know Tom. what? Uh, he, he's the, uh, the, the current um, uh, priest of St. Lawrence Elementary School, which where, where I went. Uh, he went to high school with my sister Kathy as well, at Tampa Catholic. But uh, we didn't really talk to Father Tom that morning. We talked to, to Tom Morgan. The, the Tampa native from Wallsville. Excellent Wallswood, segue, you know? Steve. Excellent. And that's why we want to have him on the show next mm -hmm. week. You know, he came in with his collar because, you know, as priests have to, it's required right. of them whenever they're out in the public. Mm -hmm. you know, so he came in dressed regulation. Mm -hmm. And rather nice, Father Tom, thank you for picking up the breakfast tab, by nice the way. Too. That was kind of nice as well. But the, the interesting part about it was we took him all the way back to his home in Wellswood, man. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, that's what we want to talk about next week. Father Tom, yes, we want to hear about... You're graduating into the priesthood. Yes, we want to hear about the good things that St. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Elementary School is doing currently with Cuba. Right, right. Because we know that they're, they're working closely with the Cuban government to build a church there, and that's going wonderfully. But we want to know, Tom, when you got your first bicycle, when you used to ride, you know, before you even dreamed about becoming a priest, let's talk about that. So he's going to be right. with us next week on the show. Rumor has it we might even bring in Monsignor Higgins. Right. Are you ready for that, Steve? Yes. I okay, am. Steve is ready for that. <laughs> In fact, I'm, gonna I'm get, not. I'm going to get his pictures this weekend, too. So. Good, good, good. So, Monsignor Higgins, one more thing before we get to our guest. All right, let me talk about this because this is a big one. Walt and Betty Allen, bring up that picture. Bring up that picture, picture Walt and one. Betty. There you go. Watching us at home. Here we go. First bell ring of the new year for Walt and Betty celebrating. Walt and Betty Allen celebrating 64 years of wedded bliss. Betty tells us that 62 of them have been so-so and the other two have been well. We, we don't even talk about those. But look at that picture right up there at the That's top. A great, Isn't that a classic? Isn't that wonderful? That's, and, and we met their daughter. We us. sure did. We sure did. Diane Cooper. Diane at, was there Saturday. At the library Saturday. At, Florida, at the Florida Genealogical yeah. Society event. So congratulations, Walt and Betty. Thank you so much for being uh, such great. great fans. And we love you. And, um, and we wish you many, many, many That's more. That's amazing. Thank you. Father Tom Morgan, as we said next, next week on the show, now, as I can take a breath, we'll bring up this video. This little video that we're about to show you, it's about two minutes long. We'll introduce you to our guest, who you're going to meet here in just a minute. 
and uh, kind of tells you what he's been up to, who he is and where he's going and, and what's on his mind. Ambitious plans. We mm -hmm. are so proud to be teaming up with him because, you know, it's like they say, Stevie, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the same church, mm -hmm. uh, you know, same, same pew. We're looking at the same hymnal. I don't know what any of that means. But, but the reality is we all have a passion for the same thing, which right. is to say preserving Tampa history. Mm -hmm. Let's meet Brian K. Derry with this video here, and then let's meet him in person when we get back on the other side. Enjoy this. Dairy of Triple Knot Productions. I am an award-winning documentary filmmaker. I was born here in Tampa, Florida. Did you know that Tampa began as an Indian fishing village dating back for thousands of years? Native tribes used to call the village by the bay Tampa, which meant sticks of fire. In the early 1500s, explorers that came to Tampa would spell the city how we know it today. Then in the spring of 1539, Hernando de Soto sailed into the Tampa Bay area to search for gold. After he and his crew left, the area was largely untouched for about 200 years. Did you know that even though local Indians named Tampa, the official name given was actually Fort Brooke? Then in 1855, the town of Tampa was established. Soon after, a man named Henry B. Plant came to explore the city. He extended the railroad to Tampa in 1884 and started a steamship line to Key West and Havana, Cuba. In 1891, Plant further boosted the area with the opening of the Tampa Bay Hotel. In 1898, the United States declared war on Spain, and Tampa was home port of the embarkation of troops to Cuba. It was during this time that Tampa had a visit from a colonel named Theodore Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders. As you can see, Tampa in its first few hundred years has had some enriched history. With a team of historians, researchers, and other filmmakers, we are embarking on an adventure, and we need your help. I am here today to help preserve the history of Tampa. I'm producing a multi-episodic documentary series with my desire to get them to the local schools and colleges to be used as a teaching guide. With your help, together, we can achieve that. Triple Knot Productions is a 501c3. Help us preserve the history today for a better tomorrow, right here in Tampa, Florida. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was wonderful. This is Brian K. Deary sitting next to me, and I just want you to know that if you have any question or doubt about this man's skill and ability as a cinematographer, a videographer, an editor of video, as you'll notice, he's wearing exactly the same shirt that he was wearing, and that, that's because he shot that about 20 minutes before we came on the air. Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Great to be with Welcome us. Welcome to the man. show, Brian. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Thank our you. humble little show that we do here each and every week. Gosh, I'm so excited to have you here, man, because we got lots to cover. Uh, I think sure we did. should start the story at the beginning, man, and tell everybody, you know, and, and, and again, mm -hmm. I digress, because I think what got me most excited about that at the end when he said so proudly looking into the camera, I'm Brian K. Darian. I was born here in Tampa, Florida. I didn't hear you say Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay, my brother. That's a body of water. Atta boy, there's my <laughs> second bell, bell ring bell. Of, the, of the new year. <laughs> tell us again, Brian, because we know, but our fans need to know a little bit more about you. Maybe tell us a little bit about your family story and, and sure. where you grew up and where you went to school. Well, I uh, grew up here, born and raised here, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, mom and dad are from here. Well, mom's really from the mountains of Tennessee. There you go. But dad is. His parents um, are from Florida. Um, you know, I need to slow down. <laughs> mom's from uh, Alachua. Up in North Florida. Way. Yeah, you know his dad was uh, um, born in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He came down here in, uh, in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And um, his mother um, and father were from Austria. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, in 1939, my grandmother was uh, dating some other man, Jack McCall, and they were at a uh, Saturday night dance at the Floridian Hotel. Mm -hmm. My grandfather shows up. That's April of 1939. October 39, they were married. Wow. Six kids later, 14 grandchildren later. Um, started a big business, Molendary Wholesale Floors, in 67. Uh, grandfather worked for the Tampa Daily Times, the evening edition, the newspaper. Remember it well? Yeah, as a photo engraver during World War, World War II. Mm -hmm. 
And um, we've, we've pretty much all have stayed here in the area, you know. Why would you leave? Exactly, you know, and I have moved, but I've come back, you know, within a year or two. You know, I went to L.A., was there for 30 days and came back. That place was not for me. <laughs> that place was not for me. So, but, um, yeah, I just, I want to do this documentary and preserve, preserve the history because it, it needs to be preserved. And, um, you know, pioneers came here back in the 1800s. And, um, you know, they made a way for us, and we need to continue making that way for generations to come. Uh, you know, Brian, um, quick question, too. When, when did that, that spark happen? When, when did you get that spark uh, for the interest in the history of Tampa? I mean, how, how did that come well, about? I have, a, I have a passion for history and for, uh, for filmmaking. And um, I've been doing documentary filmmaking since 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, for the history, I've, I've been watching a lot of Ken Burns' works all my life. And um, it was this past documentary of his that he just released on the Roosevelts. Sure. That, uh, you know, 14 hours of programming on three individuals, you know, and they had mm -hmm. unique stories and, and very memorable stories that's always been engraved in our, our, hit, our minds mm -hmm. for the history. And uh, just the way he did it, I was like, okay, all right, I think I can do something mm -hmm. along those lines, but who can I pick? Well, I'm, I'm on a bunch of Facebook uh, groups about mm -hmm. the history, and I was just totally taken back about everybody, you know, reminiscing about all the history about, you know, this restaurant, the university restaurant on Fowler, mm -hmm. you know, and just um, Sea Wolf and k pop Tree and just everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, I was born in 74. What can I reminisce about, you know? And so mm -hmm. I was like, let me, let me see if we can do something about that. And then it just evolved into, well, wait a minute. During my researching phase, we've got a great history. I mean, at the mm -hmm. first 20 years, wasn't too proud, you know, yellow fever, hurricanes, mm -hmm. you know, Seminoles, you know, and so... Uh, Gators like, and Skeeters, uh, man. Yeah, Gators and exactly. Skeeters, that's all we had Exactly, here. and so... Then some cigars <coughs> came later. Cigars came later, and my favorite sandwich, the Cuban sandwich. Oh. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah. I think every morning when I do my post on Facebook page, you can tell when I'm hungry, because one day it's Cuban sandwiches, the next day, you know, it's devil, devil crabs. crabs. Yeah, exactly. We saw that so, one, too. Yeah, and so, you know, maybe I might do sweet tea tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> there but, you go. But anyway, uh, it's, it's going to be a great project, because... Um, there's so many stories that I'm connecting with everybody every day. Uh, today, a young lady said um, James McKay was her great grandfather. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a young lady who helped contribute yesterday. She's been researching a lot of Woody Garcia for her boyfriend. Um, when he was young, he didn't know his father, so she's doing that to preserve the history for uh, for him. And so uh, there's just so many stories out there, so many untold stories, and that's right. And they need to be told. They That's need right. to be told. They need to be. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you, you know, you guys are doing a great job every week doing this. And you said USF's archiving it and everything. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then uh, so collaborating together and with the residents of Tampa, you know, we can we can preserve our history. I, I mean, think, and I think we mm -hmm. should. And, and and let me just say, I'm I'm grateful for the fact that you know Ken Burns yes. mm -hmm. uh, inspired you. Oh, yeah. To do uh, to do this uh, and motivated you to move forward and do this. Although I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that I, I was hoping you'd say the Tampa Native Show inspired you to do this. You know what I mean? I was, <laughs> but he did. Okay. There you go. He did. He did. I was I was thinking that might have been somewhere in there. Throw it in there. Just throw it in there, bro. But the reality is, he has set the bar so high for documentarians high. to come in Very behind high. him. Of course, he's got the budget. Mm -hmm. He's got the best staff available. But that said, you know, it, we can we can learn. You know, he's got a technique and a style. People are, gravitate towards it because you know, with the letters and the way they're written and the and and the still photography to make to look like motion. Most of us that are familiar with the Ken Burns uh, documentary style, you know, we we enjoy what we we look forward to the to to his documentaries for that reason because it's predictable. Whether it's the uh, national parks, whether it's the documentary on baseball or World War II or the Civil War, which was one that I think put him all over the map, oh, yeah. and then this this recent one with the uh, Roosevelts. So. Uh, you know, we, we, we move in that direction. Brian is doing all he can to assemble as many assets as possible. If you are out there and you're listening to us or you know somebody that might have a story to tell, like the stories that he just learned about, uh, the McKay family, you know, there are over 150 years worth of excellent history that we really, really can't turn around. What Brian didn't tell you, he's going to tell you in just a couple of minutes, is that he's putting this together not just for any grandiose idea, uh, you know, self-serving idea, but because he wants to be able to put this in the school system so that as That's our awesome. kids uh, who are yet to be born, really and truthfully, mm -hmm. get to the fifth, sixth, seventh grade, when they get to that jun those junior high years, they can learn about Tampa history. And I say Tampa history because it's important. We talk about it on the show tongue-in-cheek all the time. Really and truthfully, if we're not careful, Brian, they're going to they're gonna do something here that's going to be really ugly and, and, and try to... They're trying to change the texture of our, the name of our city from Tampa to Tampa Bay. It's just, 
something that we have to push back on. So that's what Brian is doing here tonight is to express that to him. Now, we have some pictures of you mm -hmm. and your family when you were a young whippersnapper. You mm -hmm. mind if we go through those real quick? Go ahead, go ahead. I think we should, and as they come up, you see yourself in the photo in a two-shot. Uh, you can describe that uh, picture, what we're seeing. Becky, anytime you're ready to want to roll through those pictures, and we'll get ready to take your calls in just a few minutes, so stand by. That's uh, me as the baby. Uh, that's my one brother. I got three older brothers. That's my other brother, Chris, and we were at uh, Fort DeSoto Park. Not Tampa, actually, but in the area. No, Fort DeSoto's a great place to hang out with your oh, family. Oh, we used to go there. Sure. That's me. If uh, my brothers were here, they'd probably say that I probably tried to cut my hair or something, but <laughs> that's the infamous Tupperware bowl cut, I would say. Of course. <laughs> well, and, and what Prince Valiant haircut did you know, we Exactly. All sport, we all sported that the look, Buster man. Brown. Some Buster Brown. Hey, it went by a lot of names. Uh -huh. Chili Bowl, whatever. <laughs> it went by a lot of names. That's me and mom at Fort DeSoto again. That's and, a cute uh, picture. Here's a that's funny great. story is that my girlfriend and I were at an antique store about two months ago, and I saw that exact same Mickey Mouse uh, doll. And I was like, man, I should pick that up for, for sentimental value. I'll check it out. Of course. Of course. Uh, my brother getting um, shipped off, actually flying out of Tampa to San Diego for boot camp. And that was in 88. And we're at Tampa International on the tram there. Nice, man. Nice blonde hair you got going there, kid. Yeah, I don't know where the, hair, a boy. Know where the hair went. Uh, the K-pop tree. We love that place. Oh, it's great. Mom was here right now. She'd say they made the best Singapore slings. Nice. <laughs> Now it's the Sam Ash Music Store. Yeah. And you know what? The gardens are still there. They don't look as good as they looked right there in that picture, but the gardens are still there. It's another great place. That's my great uncle Frank, Frank tell Gary. Us, tell us about this guy, because for those of you listening now, listen intently, intently because there's a great story here with this man. Frank Derry, he uh, started Dairy Promotions, and uh, he also started uh, Golden Gate Speedway, which was out ah, on Fowler Avenue. There you we go. all know about that. They had one NASCAR event there, and Richard Petty won it. And, uh, the very king. Cool. Yeah, and so uh, Uncle Frank passed um, a few years back, and uh, yeah, he started Golden Gate. I think we got a shot of the, an aerial we shot of, of, of the Speedway. Well, yeah, it's the next photos. one? Yeah, the next one. I think two. it's the next. Well, maybe. Well. I'm not that big. That. No. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, I think it's in there. It's a black. There it there is. There you go. And then right uh, after that. that is Golden Gate Speedway, which is now a uh, big top flea market. Like I yep. said, out there on Fowler and 75. And for those of you that are looking and wondering, why is it, why is it that there's an X in the middle of that mm -hmm. racetrack? You want to tell us what that is? Well, you can tell me. Stevie, <laughs> take a know. shot at I don't, it. Well, Come on, y'all. It's for, um, well, I don't know. The pitch I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. Ready? Ready. Because somebody out there in TV land right now is yelling at the screen. Oh, yeah. I'm I know, sure my dad I know. Is. Sure I'll give you a hint. They drove backwards, man. Go ahead. Oh, I Stevie. don't know. That, Brian? I used to go as a kid, but I was young. That's demolition derby time, baby. That's, that's right. Of course that's it is. Right, that's right. That's uh, right. You drove backwards. Why would you drive backwards, Stevie? Don't tell him, Brian. Don't help him. Why would you drive backwards, Stevie? Because it, demolition derby. Yeah, but why? Well, because <laughs> you can hear Becky laughing through the glass. Why? I don't know why. Where's the engine in the car, Steve? Oh, it's in the... It's in the What's the object? It's in to the be back. the last car running. Right. That's right. what that, that right. X was for. And that was as much fun as watching roller derby. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. Roller derby was a blast, but, but demolition derby was even more fun. Okay. And you know, they did it in trucks, mm -hmm. they did it in cars, and they did it in buses, school buses. For those of you that are out there that don't believe me, Google that stuff. Demolition right. Derby. I had a little memory left. Do we have any more photos? Well, we have another photo uh, of the uh, Speedway. If we could bring that up, Becky. And in mind. the meantime, while Becky's looking for that photograph, what number is that, Steve? Um, it's right after the one we just showed. I don't have the number. I'm going to give the phone number now because we want to load those lines. I know you. We've got Brian's got some friends out there that would like to call in and say hello to him. Let's okay. go with. Uh, it is number, number 14. Number 14. Here's your phone number. 813. Oh, that's, now that's iconic. Now, that's, I heard that sign that has iconic. survived, and someone has that, uh, that old sign. Seriously? Yeah. We're going to find that sign for you, brother. We're going to find that sign. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to the tens and thousands of you that are out there watching that's, now. That's a call out. And we know you're out there. If you know who is in possession of that Golden Gate Speedway sign and that one golden arch, not the two golden arches that you're familiar not, with that sells the French fries. Not that one. Had for lunch today. <laughs> yeah, here you go. We want to know where that sign is, so please help us find it. It needs to be uh, returned to its uh, rightful place and, and, and put back in the family. And if nothing else, well, I hope we can videotape it and put it in the documentary. How's sure. that? Yeah. All right, here's, here's your phone number, ladies and gentlemen. It's 813-977-6800. Stevie, what's that number again? That number is 813-977-6800. Operators, Are standing or in by. this case, the 15-minute girl <laughs> is standing by to take your call. So we, we found out where the inspiration was. We, we found out um, 
that you, you, you share the love of Tampa with us. That's, mm -hmm. and yes. that's, you know, that's in your heart, man. Sure. That can't be denied. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your training, though. You know, we know that you, you uh, established uh, Triple Knot Productions as a 501c3. Correct. Tell us, how'd you come to that camera, man? Well, we got my dad a uh, video camera for Father's Day back in the 80s. The old over-the-shoulder VHS tapes. Huge. Dad never got to lay a finger on it, never touch mm -hmm. it. I had it. You know, my cousin and I were out there every day making movies. We made Batman spoofs, Child's Play mm -hmm. spoofs. And um, so I knew I wanted to go to um, Full Sail, which was a film school in Orlando, in uh, eighth grade. And, uh, but mom and dad said, you know what, why don't you go in the military? I said, what are you, trying to get rid of me or something? So anyway, but uh, no, I did go in the Navy, and uh, that was the longest four years of my life. Mm. I mean, it, I could not end to get out. Because you I, just wanted to get to... I wanted, wanted, I wanted to get the... You knew uh, what you wanted to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I uh, got out in 96, went to uh, um, Full Sail in 97. Actually, a little bit. I worked at uh, Auto Express right here at University Mall uh, just for wow. a few months. Yeah, matter of fact, I drove by and had a little uh, memory... Um, you know, me too. And, and I worked CDBs here too. too. I oh, apparently yes. worked a little bit of CDBs. Yes, I did. Well. Back when minimum wage was three thirty-five an hour, I was a dishwasher. They're not getting out till like three in the morning. Man, I hated that job. Oh but, wow! But you know, you had pride, and it, yeah. it paid for. And the stuff. perks weren't bad. I imagine you ate all the pizza you could handle. Yeah, we had a crew pie. We had a crew pie <laughs> every night, all the time. Every night, I had a crew pie, and then uh, so I went to full sale, and uh, I learned, and um, I actually got sick after I graduated. And did was, you? Was paralyzed for. For about uh, nine months. Oh wow! Told, this is fresh. Now you yeah, want to yeah. I didn't tell you about this yeah, when we met. Yeah, that's okay. And, Live um, TV. Was told I was never going to recover, never going to walk, but uh, mm -hmm. but I did obviously. And mm -hmm. I finally fulfilled um, my dream was to go to L.A. And I finally went out there right after 9/11. And I just something inside of me just said, "Whoa!" You Get know, me back to Tampa. I want to yeah, be home. Yep. So I came back, um, got together with a couple of friends, and we started doing some documentaries about individuals with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And it, it took off. Just the the self reward the uh, the distribution deals, the, the awards, the media attention, mm -hmm. and the stories just kept coming in, and I've been doing that ever since uh, 2005, 2006. And then um, I'm not getting away from that because that's the basis of what my organization's about. It's to uh, motivate and inspire films that you know will motivate and inspire and educate. Sure. But um, history is education too. Of and you can get is. motivated, you can get inspired by education, or history. So well, we, we are inspired mm -hmm. by it each and every week. And, and mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that Steve's family has been here since the late 1800s, early 1900s, the same with my family, you know, we're just, we're still learning. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been in production for over four years. We're in our fifth year of production and we're still learning. We're still meeting wonderful people like yourself that re-inspire us to go and dig some well, more and you know, find some more people. And, yeah. And going back to what Brian was saying earlier is that, um, that there's so much history around mm -hmm. and it has to be preserved. Um, that is so true because when we started the show back in 2010, um, within about five or six months, um, there were people that were saying, hey, there's only so many stories you can talk about. I mean, there's only so many times you can talk about Laurie Park or Tampa Highlight. But, well, here we are. It's 2015, you know, five years later. And, and we're, we're still, still talking. We haven't even scratched the surface yet, really. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it's really incredible that there is, there's, a lot of, there's enough history uh, here to go around for everyone, really. And, and it will take years to really uncover it all. And I think so. it's safe to say that it's going to take an effort. It's going to take a collective effort, all of us. Right, and by right. that I mean... Everybody that, that uh, Brian's able to assemble mm -hmm. to the team uh, to come in and help. Right. And, and you know what? Don't think that your contribution, you know, I don't have anything but this one artifact that my great-grandmother gave me. And that could lead us to four other different stories. You know, so just That's right. there's no contribution too small. You've heard the expression, mm -hmm. Steve, there's no answer that could be wrong. You know, right. there's no contribution that could be too small. Brian has a, a Facebook page. Brian also has a website. Great time to give him the website. Website is triplenotproductions.org, O-R-G. Uh, the Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Tampa uh, doc, D-O-C. I'm sorry, or Tampa TKP, TKP doc, doc, D-O-C. I wrote it down. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and those of you that are on Facebook, you can also... Uh, uh, ask for it, uh, to be friended by uh, Brian uh, to right. his personal page. He's got yeah. a personal page as well. Exactly. So there's any number, and if you can't, and if you can't do any of that, call us, and, and we'll tell you how to do it. And Facebook was a really big uh, thing as far as this history uh, preservation effort started. You know, yeah. back with us. You and know. if you and if you don't have a computer at home, and, you, and you, but you got a car or a bicycle, meet us next week at Castillo's Cafe. You can meet there Brian in sure. person, there you go. and we'll that would be great. We'll have a photo opportunity. It'd be great, and have a great meal as well. All right, let's go to our caller on line four. Callers, once again, the number is 813-977-6800, and you're welcome to call in right now. Caller, you, caller, lower your TV, because I can hear myself talking about if you have a computer at home. You're on the air with the Tampa Native Show. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. My name is Hugh, and I'm um, a, native, a Tampa Native. 
Yes, you are. Oh, although the graphic on the TV says something about St. Pete, but we won't hold that against you. <laughs> Happy New Year, Hugh. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. I, I did have a question I'd like to ask. Sure. Okay. Um, is, uh, do you touch at all on uh, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco? You know, uh, the fight doctor who's uh, an artist, accomplished artist, historian, and um, many, many multi-talented uh, legend here in, in Tampa. All right, let me, can I take, I'll, I'll take a lead on this, and, and then Brian can, can chime in as well. Um, Brian mentioned at the top that he was born in 1974, which was, I think, the year of the thriller in Manila. So you got to understand that Brian is a little bit younger than you and I, Hugh, and you're older than me, so that means, wow, I don't even want to go there. But, but, but to be honest with you, I asked him under my breath, stage whisper, you do know who that is, don't you, Brian? And he, he shook his head, no, I don't. So we're going to educate him right now. Brian, Ferdy Pacheco is a Tampa native who lives in Miami currently. He is, his other moniker is the fight doctor because for the years, the entire years, Angelo Dundee was Muhammad Ali's trainer. Yes. So Ferdy Pacheco was the doctor, the, the fight doctor, literally, who maintained Muhammad Ali, the greatest Muhammad Ali's health throughout his entire career. So, but he's also an accomplished artist. Now, you know, that. Hugh, that, that Ferdy is not in good health, and we haven't heard anything from that camp. No news is good news as it is currently, but the reality is he's not even well enough, I don't think, to travel. That said, oh, I'm sorry to hear it. yeah, so are we. Trust me, so are we. The last time I talked to him, it wasn't really, really good. We hope that he's doing well. Maybe we can get him on the phone and, and we can do a little segment with him on the show here before too much longer. That'd but the, the truth of the matter is his body of work lives. And, uh, and we, you and I and Steve, will, will educate Brian and, and bring him up to speed on who Ferdy is. Because at some point, if we can't do it live, we can do it through film clips, through archival uh, uh, photographs, right. and, uh, and even letters. You know, the man's he art a, is spectacular. He has a book, too. So. And he has a book, uh, uh, Ebor City Chronicles. Mm -hmm. So your point is taken. Make sure that uh, you get in touch with Brian on Facebook, friend him, and otherwise uh, bring him up to speed on some of the things that's on your mind. Okay, that would be great, and I'm looking forward to the movie uh, as well. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely. We are too. Thank you. Just to uh, give a little bit of an organization of the, uh, the documentary series, it's going to start out as a nine, two-hour episode series. The first three episodes are going to be on the actual history of Tampa from, you know, the Native Americans and the or Spanish the, explorers. The Spanish, yeah, the Spanish, the Spanish explorers mm -hmm. to, like, possibly something that happened yesterday. And then what's going to make the, uh, the documentary the intimate part is that the remaining episodes, and it's not, no longer actually six more episodes. Mm -hmm. Every day I'm thinking, well, I need to do this, I need to do this. It keeps adding on. But yeah, it keeps adding on. And each area, each supporting surrounding community, I'm going to do the history of that, but I'm going to pull out those intimate interviews about my experience here or my experience there. Sure. And I, when I say yeah. that, I'm talking about, you know, the residents. The community. Yes, the community. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, like I said, you know, I had a young lady ask me about Woody Garcia, and yeah, I was born in 74. I didn't know who Woody Garcia, Garcia was, but I, I, I quickly Googled him. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, yeah, he had a huge impact on West Tampa. Of course he's going to be in there. And I get so many questions about, is e Ebor going to be in there? Well, yeah, that's like the cornerstone of Tampa. Of course, yes, of course. Be. So, you know, that's a no-brainer. But, uh, yeah, if I come across people and they had a huge impact on the Tampa or on the city, course. Hugh, yeah. thanks mm -hmm. for your call, brother. Great, Happy you. New Year. And listen, let me just also say this, and we know you fancy yourself a little bit of a, um, what am I trying to say here, uh, a voice impersonator, uh, you know what I'm talking about to you right there, like a, you know, a Frank Gorshin or a, um, give me another voice impersonator, Steve. Rich Little. Rich Little. Oh, there you go. That, that's the one. I was thinking Buddy Rich, but I really was looking for Rich Little, but it came out Buddy Rich, who was a world-class drummer. Again, somebody Brian probably doesn't know because he's too young. But the Rich Little. Look, there you go. Rich Little. The reason I'm mentioning that is because as Brian progresses in, um, in, the, in the production of this documentary, he's going to, again, employ the, uh, the styles, the stylings of uh, Ken Burns, which you know, uh, if you've watched some of Ken Burns' work, involves uh, readings of typically letters that are in most cases intimate. And he's going to need many, many, many voices mm -hmm. uh, and probably volunteers to come help with the project. I'll throw your name in the hat if you're willing to come out and get into a recording studio and read one of these letters in your voice to lend voice, a living voice to the story. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. great. So, oh, okay, uh, do that and I'll see if I, I have time to do it. You know? Of course. No, no, yeah. no. I mean, if you don't have time, we won't wait for you. We'll go right to the next guy. Don't worry. But uh, you shouldn't miss out on the opportunity. All right, Hugh. Thank you. Happy New Year. Uh, 
Thanks, you. I very much appreciate it, and, and Happy New Year to you also. Thank you, my brother. Thanks we appreciate you. you. Bye-bye now. He That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. That's pretty good. And Hugh, and, and Hugh is another one. that he, He's such a good fan. <clears throat> he calls the show just about every week when he can. Um, it breaks his heart that he has to live in St. Pete now, but he's living mm -hmm. there with his, with his girlfriend. So, you know, it can't break his heart that much. But he is dyed in the wool tamponated. Oh, yeah. Big I'm, in wrestling. I mean, Tampa from wrestling. wrestling to, you know, he's a plan high grad, but he was Jefferson his first couple of years. He is born and raised. So, Brian, yes. you know what I find fascinating, too, is that there's so much uh, depth and, um, to our history in Tampa that it's actually attracting people like um, people like Andy Hughes, for example, who's, who, who's only been here maybe well, eight or nine years. Right. Um, uh, Joe Halden. Yes. So people that are not even from here, they're fascinated by the history, and they're, they're taking it upon themselves to, to do things like you're doing, documentaries, and just um, exploring the history of Tampa. But it's, it's, it just goes so deep and so wide that yeah. there's, it's, it's, there's a ton of it there. Every, uh, every morning I post something trivial, mm -hmm. and... Um, I had people go, I lived here all my life, didn't know about mm -hmm. this. And like, you know, I lived here all my life and I had conversations with my dad around Thanksgiving. He's like, make sure you talk about Rattlesnake. Why mm -hmm. do I want to talk about Rattlesnake? He's like, no, no, it was a town. And some guy came from Arcadia and he was canning, you know, Rattlesnake and selling it. And there was an actual post office over there and I said, okay. So I started Googling it and right over where uh, Gandy Bridge is. And I was like, wow. Right know, down there on mm -hmm. McGill Air Force mm -hmm. Base, yeah. Rattlesnake Point. And you know, things like Ballast Point, you know, you know how Ballast Point got his name, Steve? Um, no. You know how Ballast Point got his name? The original name? Yes. It was uh, Vern, Jules Vern. I didn't know that. That's a scoop now. He just yep. scooped me. The guest <laughs> just scooped Jules Vern because... Go ahead. The no, book I, from I the want Earth to hear this because I've got a story too. The book, the book from the Earth to the Moon had uh -huh. mentioned about Florida being, you know, the launching point for um, the rockets. And so, you know, that was 100 years, well, almost 100 years before we actually were putting men in space. Cape Canaveral. So, exactly. And so, anyway, um, I don't remember the lady's name off the top of my head right now, but she named that park in honor of Jules Verne, and then it changed to uh, Ballast Point. All right, okay, okay. Well, my story was a little bit, my story was a little bit different. The one I heard was uh, the, the ships used to come in, the ships, the early ships, the wooden ships, the big wood ships, and the steamers used to come in carrying rocks in their bellies as ballast, and that they would pull up there to Ballast Point and offload those erstwhile rocks to raise the ship in order to get it into the port. And the rocks that were piled up on the side became ballast, ballast point because those rocks were ballast for the ship. So that's where they dropped the rocks. That must be ballast point. So between mm -hmm. Jules Verne and ballast point, one of those is true. You decide, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Call us up, 813-977-6800. We've got a little, oh, I got a little birdie whispering in my ear telling me 15 that minutes. we've got 15 minutes to go. Wow. That 15-minute girl, even though she's not at the table... She's Even though she's track. she's still keeping track, she's hard on. She's yeah, she is. <laughs> she's she's watching out. Hold it up there, darling. Let everybody know. Fifteen minutes to go. All right, fifteen minutes. So if you want to get a question in for Brian, now's your chance. Eight one three nine seven seven sixty eight hundred operators, or in this case, a fifteen minute girl is standing by. We we can't let you off the table. We can't let you out of the hot seat until you tell us a couple of things like, what are you doing for funding? For funding? Well, how, are you, how are you getting your funding? Well, I am a registered local 501c3. Which is a so nonprofit non for those of you keeping score. Yep. And I'm um, going to be asking for local businesses to put their name on it. If they can uh, sponsor it, they can donate money. Uh, individuals can go to uh, our GoFundMe or GoFundMe.com page. They can fund it. Um, donations are greatly accepted. Greatly appreciated, yep. greatly accepted. All of that information, I'm assuming, is on your website. Yes, yes it With is. With links, appropriate <clears throat> links to the funding appropriate page. Appropriate links, especially else. on the Facebook page. It's, uh, it's on there and it directs people to uh, the GoFundMe page. Well, we're waiting for our next phone caller. We've got about 10 pictures to go we in do. about 15 minutes. We don't want to miss any of these no, pictures. No, not at all. So let's go ahead and roll through the remaining 10 pictures, Becky, in the appropriate time. Starting with number 15. 15, and then Brian can uh, speak over the pictures and let us know uh, exactly w what it is that we're looking at. All right, start with the next one after that. That's okay. wonderful. There we go. That is uh, my organization's table. We uh, set up at Mosey. October, they have the uh, Disability Awareness Month, and they have different vendors come out. So that's just um, one of the tables there. At Mosey. At Mosey. Wonderful. And this was a, a short film that I did called The Drop-Off uh, back in 2013. And this was uh, Julian Lane Park, which was formerly... Phillips Field. Phillips Field, yes. And so... 
That's my dog there. There you go. And I was shooting an autism uh, PSA out at uh, Plant Park out there. The beautiful day, huh? It was a beautiful day. This is me shooting uh, underwater footage, obviously, at the uh, Florida Aquarium for one of my documentaries. Hmm. Interesting. This is me with my now girlfriend, who's a host of the homework, uh, Math Homework Hotline TV show. I used to work for the Tampa Education Channel. Excellent. Does she help you with your homework? Well, that's all I'm asking. You know what? Her, I bet she her, keeps her, some good books. Well, she's a math teacher. And yeah, so I bet when, she keeps some good books, man. Oh, man, when, uh, when her and her son do homework together, and I'm like, when do they put letters in math? You yeah. Know, like, <laughs> some of that, that algebra, man. Where, <laughs> where well, I'm still first? working on odd from odd leaves odd. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, where was that show when I was in school? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, boy, exactly. did we need it, too. This was uh, with uh, the former mayor, Pam. Uh, I Oreo. Uh, there you go. I Oreo. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a proclamation there for the education channel. Nice. Ex yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And this is me, my cousin, and his son at the uh, kids' parade in 2008. Right around the corner. Yes. Oh, man. Yep. Coming right coming up at the end of the week. Yep. January 31st. And we understand that you fancy yourself a part time pirate yourself, huh? You like this, this time of year when things just kind of yeah, really pick uh, yeah, up? Yeah, I, I love uh, Jack Sparrow. It's uh, great movies and great characters. Come on, Jack. Uh, who doesn't like Jack Sparrow? Have you ever met anybody that doesn't like Jack Sparrow? I haven't met anyone that doesn't like him. I haven't met anybody. No. No. And I wouldn't hang with him if I did. No. Okay. <laughs> just letting you know. Jack Sparrow. For those of you that don't know, Stevie, tell mm -hmm. me who it is. Famous pirate. Um, Come on, Stevie. Uh, what's his name? No, no, I'm not going to tell you. I can't remember his name. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. That's mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. Bruckmeyer. Bruck Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, Jerry Bruckheimer. Jack Bruckheimer. 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 And they spare no expense. Yeah. And yeah. one, two, and three, and I think there's... Well, there's a fourth there's one. There's a fourth one coming, then, right? No, no. They already did a fourth one. Uh, actually, I just saw the other day. They're building sets for a fifth one. So, oh. So, yeah. So anyway, wouldn't it be just a treat to work on that set, huh? Oh, I mean, as a cinematographer, it would be something special to be a part well, of. My dream was always to do the Star Wars films or, base, or because, really, because really a James Bond film. I mean, oh, oh man, I'm a big Bond fan. Ian Fleming. Oh. Dun, 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 okay, I got you. Dun, you know, dun, 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 dun. And you know, Brian. Goldfinger. Um, got a question too. Yes. Before we before we get no, to no, late. we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. Um, well, of all the things that you've you've discovered, things that you've uncovered, uh, what would you say is the most exciting or the most um, uh, I, I don't know the most exciting thing that you've uncovered so far? Well, I've always known about Charlie Wall, mm -hmm. and um, I got a hold of uh, Paul Guzzo's documentary Charlie Wall. For Christmas, mm -hmm. that was one of the mm -hmm. gifts I asked, and I watched it, and it was really good. And um, Oakland Cemetery, 1850. Great. Oh, I yes. love cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Worked right down the road from Oakland, and when I found this place, I walked around. I took my steps home with me. I'm walking around. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, pirates. Pirates are buried here. Mm -hmm. Here we go, pirates. And uh, I had to find the Wall family. I had to find Charlie Wall's tombstone. Uh, Jacob steps on. He's standing around on top of a uh, Wall's grave. I'm what? like, dude. I said, if you didn't know what. Charlie Wall was, he'd reach right through you and pull you down. But, uh, and that was in Oakland? Oakland, yeah. Okay. And then uh, I had to find his house. And it was two doors down from someone that I used to know. I'm like, man, it's funny how See? we're all connected mm -hmm. and how things in life is connected to other things that you know, we're brought back to years later. So, what, so do you, what is it that you say about, about Tampa, Stevie? It's the biggest? It's, a small, the small, it's the biggest small town there you go. Go. out yep. there. Yep. It really, really it, is. It really it's is. True. And, and the only thing that I can, I can say with, cert, with certitude is that our history lives, albeit under layers, you know, it's, it's almost like an archaeological dig. It's almost mm -hmm. like an excavation at an archaeological dig. You've got to get in there. You've got to get your hands dirty. You've got to get the brushes out. Yep. You've, got to, you've got to get some, some fine motor skills to kind of articulate and figure things out. But it's available to us because the fine work that the USF mm -hmm. Archives Library is right. doing, Amazing the work. Genealogical Society is putting it out there as well. Um, Johnny Sinchett and his vintage Tampa Johnny books. Johnny Sinchett. Dan uh, Perez. Dan Perez, TampaPicks.com. That's Rex right. Gordon, the Hillsboro High School uh, Alumni Association. And see, I've partnered with uh, Josh McMorrow Hernandez, who wrote a book That's on, right. uh, mm -hmm. on uh, Carol Wood, and he's got a book coming out in April. And we've teamed up and um, we're working together on the writing and that's the fun part right now is the research you know what i mean mm -hmm. i'm a camera guy but i love the research i've been i'm finding out new stuff every day i'm just like oh well let me go back to my outline and add this in matter of fact i added something in yesterday from 1818 you know that's when they first wow. came here to scout out the location before fort brook was established mm -hmm. in the 1824 so like all right well let me add this in there it's ex but, it's exciting to wake up every day isn't it yes yes and and for those of you it that really may is. not know uh, again uh you ought to really kind of seek Brian out on Facebook especially because he does a great job of posting. And you said mm -hmm. earlier, you said 
you post each day you make a trivial post and I, I think you misspoke I there's did. nothing did. trivial yeah. about his yeah. posts Sorry. his posts are extensive uh, they, they give you all the information that you need and it's yes it could be trivia but it's certainly not trivial yeah, I yeah. think it's more historic information mm -hmm. exactly. which is the neat part about it he does all the research he does all the writing all you've got to do is read it and come away with a smile going wow either that reaffirms what you already knew or you're learning something entirely new. Mm -hmm. You know, we live here our whole lives, yep. and we drive by certain places and we don't think twice about it. It's like the Big Cat Rescue. I I'll go back to the Big Cat Rescue. You didn't know it was there. <laughs> you see the entrance to it, it's, it's 12 feet wide. It's a driveway wide. I got a personal story to that. But it's 40 And acres. we need to hear that personal story, so hit me with a personal story, Brian. Don Lewis was the guy who uh, bought that land. Mm -hmm. My dad worked with him uh, during the summers, painfully. I used to work with my dad during the summers. and. Uh, Carol, who runs it now, mm -hmm. she didn't like me because I was trying to dig a hole or something and I broke the shovel and she thought I was being a typical lazy kid or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't until I uh, was in the Navy, came home, Dad's like, I got to take you out somewhere. I got to take you somewhere. I said, okay. So he goes and shows me, shows me these big cats. I'm in this cage with this cat. And I'm just like, wow. And it, it was a great life experience, you know, being with these cats. And just, I mean, she's doing great things with mm -hmm. rescuing these cats and bringing the community together. And that's really good, you know, hats off, so oh, yeah. cool stuff. Great, great another, organization. Another fabulous nonprofit. But again, you, you drive past it, you don't know that it's there. And then you go back and you see it, you go, what? When did mm -hmm. this get here? It's only been there for the last 18 years. I want to make a request to, uh, to our viewers. Please do look right um, yeah. into that camera right there and do um, so. Well, you guys are going to need to uh, dig into your, your attics, your, your boxes, and get all the old photos out, the old film. Uh, dig into those memory banks um, and get your stories out. And I want to hear true stories. I don't want to hear, oh, when Elvis came here at Curtis Hickson Hall, we went down and had a Cuban sandwich, which he probably did. You know, mm -hmm. matter of fact, today's the King's 80th birthday if he were to live. That's so, right. But, uh, That's right. But yeah, definitely, uh, I'm going to be coming, and uh, we need to we need to save those stories. So I need I need the photos and film and the memories. There's wow. your PSA. Well, you know, Brian, <clears throat> that is that is so important. In fact, um, we mentioned that as well. Um, there's so much out there that I, I know people have, have things in their, um, their closets, in yep. their attics, um, in their house and boxes. There's a ton of stuff out there, and it's a matter of getting that. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. When we met with Father Tom the other day, um, I said, Father Tom, do you have any pictures by any chance of the St. Uh, Lawrence Carnival uh, back when you said, you know, we were in, in elementary <coughs> school? He says, you know what, I think I do. And I, so he's going to check on that this week, and he's going to go to his mom's house and, and try to find it. But, to me, it's, it's like hitting the lottery to find one of those photos of the St. Lawrence Carnival back in 1973, 74. Um, but anyway, it's, it's just exciting stuff. Um, when we got, the, we got the videos, remember, from um, uh, Maria Williams' trip? Sure. Um, it was uh, 1711 East Hillsborough Avenue, National Auto Supermarket. Mm -hmm. Also an old video of uh, Laurie Park in the early 60s. That was just, I was so excited to get those. It was, it was almost like little archives, you know. I, I would like to spend a whole week at the uh, USF uh, Special Collections. Even even night, I'll, I'll bring a sleeping bag. You know, I'll stay overnight, like night at the museum. Bring some I, snacks. I would like to do that, really. <clears throat> I mean, it's just so exciting to find, to uncover these things and find them. They're like little pieces of our history. Well, the reality is, as we get older, you know, as mm -hmm. the community gets older, we we have to realize that, you know, these facts and artifacts become more and more precious and more and more priceless. Right. So. That's our call out for 2015. That's our homework assignment for 2015. This is our first show of the new year. Let's make it this year, our business, that this year we're gonna find some of those gems, some of those pearls, mm -hmm. and, and get together with us. And if you've got a story to tell, we wanna tell your family story. We'll bring you on the show, and we'll do just like we did with Brian. We'll sit down here, we'll have a nice conversation at the table and share it for everybody to enjoy, and for history's sake too, because these shows are being archived. So. This will be the year that we're asking you to get up there in the closets uh, and, and dig through some of the stuff at your abuela's house, at your grandma's house, at your mom's house, and, and pull some of those things down. It may be something as trivial as an ashtray that I was gifted not too long ago that says Frisch's Big Boy on it. And it's an ashtray. It's an original ashtray from the Frisch's Big Boy, which, you know, that place doesn't exist anymore. Imagine how they must have felt, those curators, from that from that library in Boston, Massachusetts, when they recently unearthed a 300-year-old cornerstone that was a time capsule that had inside of it original signatures and fingerprints of <coughs> Samuel Adams and Paul Revere and these kinds of things. Well, we have them here, too. We have them here, too, and our history is just as rich. So, by all means, there's, uh, there's my impassioned plea to get out there and take care of that for us. So help us out. Uh, let me get a 
couple of quick things before we get up out of here. We've got about three minutes to go. Brian, thank you very much for thank being here. Thank you guys here. for having me. Um, no, and you're going to be back. This yes. is just the, the first of many appearances mm -hmm. for you because mm -hmm. uh, we're going to chronicle your story as we go along, and we're going to help Good. you put it right. together. Uh, next week on the show, we talked about it. Father Tom Morgan will be here from St. Lawrence uh, Elementary, Sc Elementary School. Elementary School. St. Right. Lawrence Elementary yep. School. Uh, in a couple of weeks beyond that, uh, Coach Pete Mulry, who has recently been inducted, uh, will be inducted into the Florida High School Sports Hall of Fame, uh, will be with us. We're reaching out to Coach mm -hmm. Frank Premui to come in and tell his story as well. Great show. Uh, June 27th, as soon as this show is over, get to your calendar circle, June 27th. There's going to be an amazing party on June 27th. It's going to be citywide. You're going to hear about it. You're going to want to be there as well. June 27th, mark that on your calendar. Let me also bring this up, single on me. This is this Saturday, there it is, Saturday, January the 10th from 11 to 3 p.m. What does that say on there? Bow Wow and Meow. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a benefit for, as you can see it there, Forever Yours Pet Rescue. I always get it crooked. Forever Yours Pet Rescue. It's up there on the Beef O'Brady's on um, Gun Highway North fundraiser for these, uh, this wonderful organization. Uh, help the kitties and help the dogs. Help, help the perritos well, the come on out. We'll be there. Dog. We'll be there eating chicken, chicken wings. There's and a doggy uh, and, kissing and booth. Having a, yes, there's a doggy kissing booth as well. boy, Stevie. I'd like to see you there. <laughs> Don't forget, immediately following this show on channel 30, 36 Verizon and 949 Bright House, last week's show, which was great. Last week's show was uh, Dale Swope, and he gives us a history <coughs> lesson on the Florida brewery, the first brewery built by Mr. Martinez Vicente. Vicente Martinez, he wore easy for That's me to say, one, in 1895. Let's get our cups up, everybody. Let me just say another wonderful, wonderful experience being with you here this week on the Tampa Native Show. Thank you, Brian, Thank you, Brian. K. Derry, for being much. here salute. with us. Papa, salute. We're going salute. Salute. to do this again, I promise you. Okay. Look in on us, tampanativeshow.com. We're here each and every week on Thursday. If you have a question or a comment, you can leave it on our website. For everybody that puts this show together, this is Steve Canella. I'm Mario Nunez. Salud and, and happy, happy days. days. We love you, Tampa. See you next week. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks again, Brian. Thank you. Back when we were younger And everything seemed new We used to have a lot of fun Yes, we did No matter what we do Sleepy days, long summer nights Going anywhere we please With love that I could call my own Love that I've always known The city that I call my home A home from which I never roam This love affair was meant to be I love her and she loves me I remember Tampa Oh, she remembers me She remembers me Tampa Native Show.